think I may have found paradise in Europe. This is the Blue Lagoon on Camino Island in Malta. Good morning from Gozo Island. I've just checked out of the B&B. I'm back in the rental car and I'm heading towards the harbour to catch a ferry back to Malta. And then I'm going to catch another smaller ferry across to the Maltese archipelago's third largest island. And that is a place called Camino, which is sandwiched between Malta itself and Gozo. I am not far now from the harbour here in Mjar, I think it's called. You can see a rickety old stone wall in front of me. And then the town, I believe, with a church, there are 365 approximately churches on the Maltese islands. And considering the size of the islands, that's impressive. Okay, I'm going to head back into the car and catch that ferry. Welcome to Comino, an island about one square mile in size with hiking trails around its perimeter so you can visit some of the coastal towers and abandoned buildings from its past. It's also a great place to observe wildlife and also have a look at some of the uh, plant life that, uh, that is here as well. It is particularly famous though for its scenic viewpoints, its incredible picturesque steep cliffs including hidden beaches and coves. All of that is incredible, but it is perhaps most famous for this right here. Look at that, the Blue Lagoon. I'm gonna be coming back here for a swim a little bit later, but I'm gonna start off on that hiking trail I was talking about, see if I can get to one of the coastal towers first of all. Looks like it's right up ahead. I thought that was an island there, but it looks like you can get on it somehow down here. It must be adjoined to the main island. Let's go and see if I can see some uh, people over there anyway, and some kind of caves. So I want to go and investigate further, see if I can maybe get up there and have a look in that cave. This is how I always imagined the moon would look. This kind of barren landscape. Temperature today is about 85 degrees, so it is a warm one, but there is a bit of a breeze, which is always good. Might be able to take a look down here. I can hear the 
see anyway crashing against the rocks so Malta's history goes back thousands and thousands of years I mean the other day I was in Gigantia in Gozo looking at Stone Age temples built about five and a half thousand years ago since that time Malta has been it's got very windy all of a sudden Malta has been ruled by lots of different people including the Phoenicians including the Arabs including the Romans of course they got almost everywhere including the French and the British but the period between the 16th and the 19th century was when the Knights of St John ruled here they were a religious sect sent from the Pope in the Vatican and they ruled here for around right about 300 years as I said and one of the marks they left a lot of marks on the country but one of them was they built pretty much all of these towers I believe so this is the Santa Maria Tower and the defensive mechanism was built in such a way that one tower can see the next one along the chain all the way around the islands including Camino and Gozo so this one looking way out there can be seen from Mjar in Gozo and in the other direction boy it has got windy in the other direction it can be seen from the Red Tower in Malia Bay which is where I was just the other day and these towers some of them are abandoned and crumbling and broken down but some of them have been restored this one very recently was restored so I'm going to pay two euros and go and have a look inside a little bit of history right here in Comino so this tower was built in the 17th century 35 steps to get to the top this watchtower was restored between 2002 and 2004 and it has a six meter long drawbridge at the top as I said two euros to get in and have a look so I'm going to head in and do just that quick look inside before I head to the roof you can see that uh, the mortar concrete used for these bricks has basically dried out I've seen that a lot in this country as well same there looks like it's about to crumble down heading up to the observation deck quite a climb getting out here so there's the isolation hospital I'm heading there next I'll tell you about it when I get there and over to the left the crystal lagoon that I walked past and then the blue lagoon over there in the distance over this way is Malta so I'm heading later today. Some photographs and some descriptions telling you about the various towers. As I was saying on Malta, there are a lot of them. Nice, looks like a little dining area now. There we go, entrance there. There's the tower with the drawbridge on the right there. Really fascinating to go and have a walk around, have a look at the tower for myself. As I said, I'm heading for the isolation hospital next. Now, this place was built by the Order of St. John and it was actually built as a palace, but it was used as an isolation hospital shortly before the First World War for people who were on ships coming to Malta who had diseases like the plague so they would be put in this isolation hospital on their own island almost during the first world war 
the hospital was revamped and used for soldiers and then ever since that it became abandoned and there was a note saying that the island has a population of about five people and I think they may live in the former abandoned hospital but is now I guess a little residential area here although there doesn't look like there's much going on yes indeed so it is definitely a residential area now as I said not much happening there are no tarmac roads on the on the island so there are very few cars and I should imagine what there are probably four by fours not that you really need a car it's not that big so I'm gonna follow the trail round now there's a battery over here that faces I believe the Maltese coast and uh, then I'm gonna carry on all the way around hopefully end up back at the Blue Lagoon has just kind of disappeared so making my way through this rocky landscape now trying to find a path on the other side of the island hopefully this little shortcut will bring me back to a pathway hunting is an incredibly popular activity in Malta and it is currently hunting season so as you make your way around the islands you have to be very careful that you are not putting yourself in any kind of risk of being mistaken for an animal. You do often see people with shotguns and all kinds of weaponry heading out into the rural parts of the islands to, to do some hunting. Luckily, here on Camino, the whole island is designated a nature reserve, so there is no hunting allowed on the island full stop. Well, I found myself an old Maltese rubble wall Incredible. Placed at exactly the right spots with exactly the right shapes of stone. It looks like it's just been done by almost anybody just piling up stones one on top of the other but it's actually quite a skill to it making sure that they don't all collapse over. So while I'm heading back towards now the Blue Lagoon by some old buildings there is some buildings here up ahead of me but I don't know what they are they're not marked on a map and they do seem to be all completely empty and abandoned Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit almost like barracks I couldn't resist it just popped in for a quick look haven't got very long I wonder what it was roofs collapsed in there You can see the ironwork and wooden beams as it turns out holding the what looks like wooden roof on definitely limestone blocks it does look like some kind of army barracks or something like that there's a ramp here and it looks like some scaffolding up to hold maybe that wall in place at that I thought that was a water tank it looks more like a kiln or a, an oven man I wish I had more time to do a bit of exploring in here but unfortunately I'm gonna have to press on I don't want to lose that swim in the Blue Lagoon. Got to fit that in before I catch the, the boat back. A 
like an oasis in the desert. There is a snack bar. So you're about to see a very rare sight. I thought it was going to be a motor car. Apparently there are a few cars on the island, about five residents. That was actually a little shuttle that takes you from, I think, Santa Maria Bay, back where I was, right up to the Blue Lagoon. 